This is going to be verse by verse of a very short chapter, Hebrews chapter 8. So Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 1, of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. We have such an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. He says, this is the sum. So what you have is a summary of what was spoken in previous chapters. So Paul says, to sum it all up, this high priest is Jesus Christ. He is set on the right hand of the throne because his work is finished. He is the right hand man. And the right hand is mostly positive in the Bible, while the left hand is negative. For example, as Jesus will say to them, On the left hand, depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire. But Jesus is the right hand man. He is a better high priest. He says in Hebrews 10, 12, But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. Jesus Christ only had to die one time. He didn't have to make another offering for sin because he was the perfect sacrifice. He didn't have to do it again. As it says in Hebrews 12, 2, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. A good rule to follow is, to not sit down until you get the work done. And that's what Jesus Christ did. If you sit down until you get if you don't sit down until you get the work done, you'll get a lot more done. Jesus Christ got an eternity of work done in those short years that he walked this earth in the flesh. Now the Levitical high priests couldn't sit down like Jesus because they always had to had to go off for another sacrifice. But Jesus is the perfect sacrifice. Only had to be offered once. So he sat down. Because he was finished. Colossians 3.1 If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. At work, it's hard to find good workers. They want to sit down on the job. They want to sit down for the work's done. If you want to be like Jesus Christ, then don't sit down until it is finished. So the majesty in Hebrews 8.1 is God the Father himself. And that's where Jesus sat by. Sit down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Hebrews 8.2 A minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle which the Lord pitched and not man. So the minister of the tabernacle which the Lord pitched is who you have to go to? You don't go to a white-collar earthly priest. This is talking about the heavenly tabernacle. The Lord pitched it, not man. The earthly tabernacle was just pattern, patterned after this one. But Jesus Christ is a better high priest with a better tabernacle, the true tabernacle. Hebrews 8, 3, For every priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices, wherefore it is of necessity that this man have somewhat also to offer. Jesus Christ, the better high priest, offered himself. The devil wants you to sacrifice blood to him. The true God shed his own blood for you. Jesus sacrificed himself and offers himself as a free gift. The devil wants you to make yourself a blood sacrifice, your child a blood sacrifice, even though he would never sacrifice himself for you. Jesus Christ is offering every man the free gift of salvation. Hebrews 8, 4, For if he were on earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law. When Jesus Christ was walking around in the flesh on earth. He was a prophet, not a priest. If he were on earth, he should not be a priest. He was as a prophet. Now he's the priest. In the future, he's king. He does it all. He's prophet, priest, and king. For if he were on earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law, who serve unto the examples and shadow of heavenly things, as Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle. For see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern showed to thee in the mount. 
So Moses made the tabernacle after the pattern shown him by God himself. He used the instruction manual given by God himself. Notice it says he was admonished of God. When God tells you to do something, you should do it, and you should go after the pattern that's shown you in the Bible. Just like Moses went after the pattern shown him in the mount. In the mount, he got revelation directly from God. When you open the book, you get revelation directly from God, giving you a pattern of how to do things in your life. So God told Moses to make something that would remind the people of something in heaven. If God tells you to do something, then it will be something that will set your affection on things above, and he will tell you to do something that will remind somebody of eternity, show them a glimpse of eternity. When those people saw the tabernacle, they would instantly be reminded of God. He told Moses to see that he does these things according to the pattern shown unto him in the mount. Moses was given revelation on things to write down. You, can, you are given revelation on things that were wrote down in the Bible. You literally read what Moses wrote, those same things that God gave to him when you're reading those books of Moses. And you need to do all those things according to the pattern shown to you in the Bible. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Hebrews 8, 6, But now he hath he obtained a more excellent ministry, but how much also is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. Jesus has a more excellent ministry. He has a more excellent name than the angels. He is the mediator of a better covenant. 1 Timothy 2, 5 says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ has a better ministry than any high priest ever had. He only had to make one offer. He only had to die one time. He is the only one that didn't have to make a sacrifice for himself. Hebrews 8, 7, For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. So the law wasn't faultless. The thing about the law is that it couldn't save anybody. The covenant brought by Jesus Christ can save anybody. If that first covenant had been the best, then Jesus Christ wouldn't have had to die. If we could earn salvation by keeping the law, then Jesus never would have had to come down to die. Galatians 2.21, I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Hebrews 8, 8, For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. So this covenant that he's talking about here is with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, as it says. Now we get in on this covenant, but it's primarily talking about the Jews here. And God deals with more groups of people than just the members of the church who were all one in Christ Jesus. God's not finished with Israel, and he's going to make a covenant with them. Now we get in on the new covenant. But this is primarily talking about, in Hebrews chapter 8, it's primarily talking about Israel. Hebrews eight eleven, And they shall not teach every man his neighbor, and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. In the millennium, there won't be any mortal man preaching and teaching, because everyone will have 24-7 access to seeing Jesus Christ on the throne. And he'll be teaching all nations. And it says in verse 12, For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, and their sins and, and their iniquities will I remember no more. This can apply to any born-again Christian. God has been merciful to you. He has kept you from something you don't deserve. You do deserve. He's kept you from paying for your sins in hell. You deserve to pay. He will remember your iniquities no more. The moment you got saved, you had your past, 
present and future sins paid for. Hebrews 8.13, And that he saith a new covenant, he hath made the first old, not that which decayeth and waxeth old, waxeth old is ready to vanish away. Now that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. So Jesus Christ brought the New Testament. The New Testament started with the death of the testator. And this new covenant, anybody can come be saved by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. So I hope you'll do that today before it's entirely too late.